Yeah. I'm still here, but I turned the camera off. <laughs> yeah, I might do the same. <laughs> Sadly, I can't turn mine off. So, uh, good evening, everybody. I think I know most people. I, I think, uh, so for those that don't, my name's Alan Sutherland. Um, as Lawrence said, I'm the, the chair of the Sport Action Group um, uh, as the trustee lead. So I'm a trustee of the Royal Life Saving Society and, and one of my responsibilities is, is sport. Um, now, I've written a, a, a very top level presentation to, to just take people through what sport is because I wasn't, weren't entirely sure who was turning up. Um, and so I, I just want to kind of gauge, has everybody been involved in sport in some way or yes yeah yeah okay so what i might do then is i might go through the first bit reasonably quickly and then at the end it was i was going to open up to a discussion amongst yourselves um uh, with with us about the future of life-saving sport and to get your views your ideas what you might need some help with locally or within your club uh, or branch or region or wherever it might be. Um, any ideas and those sort of things. So that, that was how I was going to structure. Um, I'm going to share um, my screen. So all of you are going to um, suddenly disappear very small for me. Um, if there's any questions throughout, please just ask. Um, that's, that's not a problem. Um, I'm happy for the session to be um, Sort of guided by by what you what you would like to know because I know some many of you have been involved in sport um, sport before. So can everybody see a, a full a full screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. Good. So uh, what's life saving sport? Life saving sport was. Um, intended to encourage lifesavers, that also includes lifeguards to develop and maintain their skills. Um, it also gives a way of allowing in some of our competitive sport to practice um, first aid uh, and water rescue under time conditions, under a bit more pressure than you might have during a, a club training. Um, that definition was from, is from the ILSF um, and you'll see different and um, slightly modified uh, definitions but all fairly much uh, talking about the same uh, and just at the link the way that I've written this presentation is that it can be put alongside uh, this video with click with links so people can click on the links and go through to to wherever it might be so for those who are interested there's a a, a little potted history of life-saving sport within RLSS UK and um, you can access at the link at the bottom so why get involved in life-saving sport um a way of attracting you or retaining existing participants in life-saving. Um, to some extent, I think I fall into that category. I found life-saving at um, university and then got quite quickly involved with the, the Bolska, the British University Life-Saving Clubs Association competitions that happened almost every second weekend uh, from, uh, from November onwards. It was quite a busy calendar um, with a, a championships, uh, a lot of different events. But for many, it's a it's a way um, I saw at university as well of people that were maybe not able to join the swim club for whatever reason or actually were bored of swimming up and down. Uh, life saving presented a way of staying fit, staying healthy. Um, it was quite good fun. It was different than just swimming up and down. Uh, there were mannequins, there were torpedo boys, there were ropes. Um, There's lots of different types of events um, to get involved in. Uh, a good way of improving your fitness and well-being. Certainly when I was competing, I was a little bit fitter than I am now when I'm stood on poolside officiating or organising or, or teaching. Uh, but it is a, is a good way of improving, uh, improving your fitness um, and mental health. Um, as I mentioned before, it gives a chance to test your life-saving skills, your lifeguarding skills, um, especially when we talk about the uh, initiative test that we do as part of the National Life Saving Championships, but also uh, the club simulated emergency response competition, or CERC. It gives a chance for people to practice those life saving skills, those rescue skills under time pressure um, and to either work together in a pair or, or as a team, depending on their age. 
the, the sport gives the chance to to inspire people, something to achieve, something to strive towards, whether that might be coming first in their age group in a competition or whether it's maybe going to a national final and competing there. Whatever it might be, there's an opportunity for people to, to be inspired. Um, courage is ongoing training. Got to keep up to date to, to take part in these competitions. And it also gives a way of raising awareness of life saving. Um, sport is one of those ways that it's accessible to people. People understand sport. Life saving sports a little bit unique. So there's often a, um, a lot of um, explanation that goes along with it. But it's a way of, of potentially getting picked up by the media and, and, and different press um, with people winning medals. People can associate with winning medals or competitions or whatever it might be, even if they don't fully understand the details. So it does give a way of raising that awareness, even if it's within the local centre, uh, as they see what's going on around them. So in terms of a, a, a sports structure, um, this is quite a busy slide by the end of it. Um, but we start with the club competitions, rookie competitions that can be held locally or nationally. Um, most of them are held locally within a club type environment. We've also got things like the Crawley Open. So Crawley Life Saving Club organise every year um, a, a, a two-day a two event. Uh, oh, sorry, no, a one-day event to um, take part in lots of different um, international um, sorry, events in accordance with international rules from ILS, um, as well as a, a CERC that's been incorporated as well. Um, it's, it's a good fun event. Yorkshire sometimes hosts the competition, and you'll find some of these uh, across uh, across the country in different areas. We've then got things like our branch competitions uh, and regional competitions organised either by the, the local branch structure and, and regions. Um, and then I've put Bolska and um, the other shield is the APO, the Association of Chief Police Officers, um, have their own life saving competition uh, that takes place at different uh, points around the country with uh, police life saving teams. Um, quite a little bit different to, um, they follow the same principles of life saving, but in a context as a police officer, um, which I have to say I find quite interesting and different the way that casualties are handled and, and managed than you would see in a in a life-saving club. We've got our national level competitions, so whether that's the speed championships that took place in March uh, in Sheffield or the national life-saving championships which is launching as we speak, um, which will feature regional heats um, and then a final in November uh, in Leeds. And then the national club um, simulated emergency response competition that, that we run uh, as well, normally in tandem with the National Life Saving Championships. They normally uh, come together. There's European level competition sanctioned by ILS uh, in Europe, uh, and as well as things like the German Cup, which are organised um, um, more locally within different um, within different countries. Some some are open to everybody. Some are, are more invitational uh, to with clubs to club uh, and some can be open to, to national teams and squads uh, development squads and things like that we also have the commonwealth uh, with its national life with its life-saving championships um, the next one are going to be in canada next year um, the last ones were in lead in 2019 and then we have our ILS are sort of world sort of sanctioned competitions with uh, the World Life Saving Championships that will take place in Italy this year. Um, and then also the World Games, which are just coming up in the USA, uh, where life saving is incorporated. Um, and they tend to be open more to, to, to clubs and to national teams. The World Championships is, is different for this year because of COVID uh, and the competition has been downsized slightly. As I mentioned, we've got national life saving championships where we put competitors through four different um, elements where we have a, a life support initiative, uh, an aquatic initiative, a swim and tow, uh, and then a line throw. And they progress, competitors uh, compete usually between July and September um, in regional heats, and those that um, reach the top of their category go through to uh, the national final for their region. Uh, and there's more that will take place in uh, November in Leeds. Um, and there's a link at the bottom there for uh, the latest information about that. And as I said, we're just launching that 
the communications will be going out shortly uh, for 2022. We have the speed championships uh, where we follow the ILS rules. And so this involves lots of different events for those aged 12 and above. Um, and that incorporates things like uh, a mannequin carry, mannequin toes, line throw relays, um, and then also where, as well as uh, team events, teams of four um, taking part in the water. But all of these are using life-saving skills that can be learned as part of the Survive and Save program or the Rookie Lifeguard program about towing people, um, carrying people, uh, so as in physical contact tow, um, rope throws, submerging under the water to pick up mannequins from the bottom. All of these things are all skills that we teach within Survive and Save and are put into the context of sport. Uh, and there's, there's more information about the speed championships uh, at the link at the bottom of the slide. We've got national rookie festivals or just rookie festivals um, and they're aimed, it says from eight up to 14, but depending on what events you want to do. Most of them are fun. Most of them are to a fun event held in a competitive type environment. It's really up to the club or, or the organiser to pick what sort of events they want to do. Um, it's quite open, uh, I would say, and, and tries to aim on the skills. So you could have people that are maybe younger than eight uh, competing in those. There's no need for big organisational structures to run these. These could be run as part of a club night. Uh, or inviting a couple of clubs uh, together from your local area to, to take part um, and get kids involved in life-saving and get them used to, to sort of competitions as part of their development, something for them to strive towards um, as uh, to give them a focus maybe for some, maybe to inspire them. And again, there's some more information on rookie festivals. There is a way to become a national, national rookie festival um, and on the website it tells you what there's a, there's a selection of, of events that you can select from uh, with pre-prepared rule book, um, which are quite nice and simple um, that could be sent out. So it helps to try and reduce the, the organisation uh, required. Just wanted to show what competitions we had coming up. Um, so we've got the World Games in the US that I mentioned, the um, Northern West Yorkshire branch are running a rookie challenge festival that they've opened up to everybody on the 17th of July. Um, all the details are on the website um, as well as a, a set of rules. So if you click on the link, it will take you through to the RSS website and all the details. We'll have our regional heats for the National Life Saving Championships taking place between the 9th of July and the 2nd of October. Uh, the Crawley Open is at the end of October on the 29th and 30th. Um, and then we'll have our National Life Saving Final uh, on the 5th of November. The World Championships taking place between September and October this year, uh, and Commonwealths in Canada next year. Um, at a national level, there the tends to be uh, mainly the National Lives Aiming Championships and Speeds that are organised as our two main sets of competitions each year. But there are many other local competitions that go on. Um, and I would really encourage that if you've got some competitions taking place, then, then let us know so we know what's going on around the country. If you need uh, any help with it, uh, any questions then then please say there are uh, different um, templates rule books that can be used to help support you so don't feel that you have to start from from scratch if you're trying to come together to make a, a, a life-saving competition and your branches will be um, uh, supportive of you as well they may hold equipment uh, they may be to help with some funds um, and those sort of things. So get in touch, use the branch grants process um, to help there. From what most of you said, you're already involved in some way in life saving, uh, but there are so many different roles, as you can see in the in the bullet points for people to get part in. And I, I really echo that there's a role for everyone at every level of our competition structure. And one of my big themes for the moment is to try to get new people involved, um, uh, irrespective of of, of um, what they want to do, trying to encourage people to show that there's opportunities, if it's shadowing, being mentored, whatever it might be, um, that there is a place for people to get involved um, and to learn from others so they maybe feel more confident. Maybe it's a couple of people club together and organise a competition and, and it less seems less daunting than just being one person. Um, 
we have the officiating pathway that, that's going to go under review this year and hopefully we'll, we'll make that simpler and, and easier for people to access bringing some of that training online rather than attending face-to-face -face courses um, we've already started that with the timekeepers course which you can still do in person uh, or there is an online module that people can do at home uh, for only a few pounds um, to get involved there that's a great that's quite a good one for parents that maybe want something to do but maybe want to feel a little bit more confident about how to use a stopwatch and when they take part uh, in competitions and then we we need lots of uh, people for, for things like scoring and fundraising team managers people to support the the organization um, that aren't maybe directly in an officiating role uh, uh, including things like announcers as well so there is quite a variety of roles there's even more that probably aren't listed there if people are interested in communications and and those sort of things using social media to try and and highlight what we do um at speeds this year a lot of speeds was uh was uh, uh streamed live through facebook uh, which worked really well, um, especially for me when I was uh, unable to attend with COVID, uh, but I could still see what was going on and, and see the events and, and the great work of the team and the competitors uh, that were taking part. So actually it's opened up new ways of people to see what we do um, uh, within a life-saving sport. So the Sport Action Group, um depending on how long you've been involved in the society i think um sport certainly uh, um, at the high levels of the society from management board of trustees um has had different names whether it's sport governance group um whether it's uh, i think it's a sport working committee it's come under different names it's it was reformed um at the start of last year's the sport action group um, to try and reinvigorate and develop life-saving sport within the UK and Ireland. So the, the trustees set the strategy and it's the, the group uh, I'm leading. Uh, the sport action group is to then implement that strategy. So come up with a plan um, and then deliver it. So we've been working on a number of different activities since last year. The life-saving challenge in Leeds was, was one of those um, as well as speeds in, in March of this year. That, that group is currently quite small, hopefully to expand shortly, um, and is volunteer led. So it's led by myself as a trustee. We have Theresa Meyer, who many of you might know, um, is our staff technical lead. So she supports us from headquarters um, and doing the things during the day that a lot of us would find difficult uh, as volunteers with, with jobs um, as well to, to balance off. Uh, we've got Stephanie Andrews, who's on the call, as she's the uh, convener of the College of Referees. Uh, we have Ian Hutchings, who's uh, a representative to ILSC. Uh, so we have the international representatives involved. Um, and we also have Elaine Lewis as the Commonwealth, um, our representative to the Commonwealth uh, Sport Group. And we have Ben Barker, who's the current chair of Bolska. So getting uh, integration with the universities. We'll, we'll shortly be advertising out for uh, an athlete representative. So, so someone to join us with that perspective to, to join in with our discussions. And we're also going to be um, we're working on um, some descriptions for project groups, uh, which I'll come on to a minute, some of the topics that we're going to be looking at. But we'll be looking for people, probably about six people per group, uh, with someone to, to take the lead and, and, and then members of that group to discuss uh, lots of different ideas that we have and things that we want to change and review going forward. And to fit on that, some of the projects that, that we're working on. So many of you know that Survive and Save is, is undergoing a, a refresh and, and a, a review. As part of that, the, the Sport Awards will be coming away from Survive and Save. And so we will start working on the development of a brand new set of awards dedicated to sport that will fit in with whatever structure we, we feel is needed. It doesn't have to fit the bronze, silver, gold. Um, uh, type of structure that we've had for the last few years uh, and that might open up some new opportunities for us. We've also started working on a sport coaching award so one of the things that that's been mentioned uh, over the years is we've got no way we, we try and teach people sport 
um, using the resources that we have. It would be good if there was something dedicated to it. So we we are working with some very experienced coaches in the UK to develop that coaching award. And the view is that that will be available later in the year. Uh, and then we'll also set up some events to help um, people to come along and actually uh, be have sort of uh, be able to coach from that award under the mentorship of coaches that have helped to write it uh, and other coaches throughout the UK and Ireland. So really sort of on the job training as, and seeing that theory and what's discussed and, and uh, online or in person in practice. Um, the College Referees will be looking at updating the officiating pathway and, and the awards that are associated with that, uh, with the aim of trying to, to, to simplify it, also making use of, of online learning, which has um, been a, a big push in, since COVID. We're also going to be setting up a project group to review the National Lifesaving Championships. Is it still fit for purpose? Do we want different events? Do we need to modernise uh, in some way in order to make the competition more accessible to all so that will be quite an interesting one of, of a group of people with the view being that from next year um, we can implement a, a revised championships um, something that's also been mentioned to me and i've heard many times is a home nations competition so we we're going to set up a, a small working group to look into okay how are we going to run a home nations competition what do we need to do what do what do we need to set up uh, what are the barriers to it? How much do we think it's going to cost? How could we make it run? And all of those sort of questions. So quite a wide range investigate with the view being that we can take a decision before the end of the year, whether that's something we want to pursue into 23, 24 um, to run, because clearly there'll be some organisation required to get us to that point um, and, and consultation with the home nations. First, we're looking at competition organisation. There's, we want to try and encourage more people to set up competitions at, at all levels and it doesn't have to be difficult and it doesn't have to be complicated so we want to try and make sure that we've got all the right materials that people might want people might need um, to try and make that transition a bit easier um, uh, and to show how easy it really can be um, a lot of it, I find has, has been templates once you've run one competition or so um, actually start to get into the swing of what you need to do um, and then we're also going to look to run officiating courses uh, courses for team managers uh, who we often use for uh, to support clubs or to for, or for regions at the national life championships as well as competition organization whether they're courses workshops whether that's in person or online to be decided but our intention is to try and run those courses to try and support more people feeling confident to get involved in life-saving sport uh, at whatever level they want to do so. So where can I find more information? Um, you may have noticed on the RLSS website um, it's had a little bit of a revamp recently and one of those things is we've ended up with lots of what called mini sites and one of those mini sites is life-saving sport so when you click on it actually everything to do with sport is nice and available and clear to you. You don't have to keep going back to different pages. It's all there. Um, and there's a bit of information about all the different championships, how to get involved, bits about officiating, upcoming events, upcoming opportunities. So, so do look there, it's, it's really good. We're going through the process of updating and adding to it. So if there's something that you see, you think, oh, actually, I keep asking this question, or it'd be good to have this information, let us know. Drop drop an email to competitions rlss.org.uk and we'll get something added to the website um, if we think that's a good idea and, and we can pull the information together. The other way is to look at Facebook uh, and Twitter. Uh, often uh, announcements are made in those ways. There's uh, groups for the college for <coughs> uh, on Facebook for the College of Referees. There's also <coughs> different life-saving sport groups in the UK and abroad. So, so use those to... Um, to get involved. Right, um, so that's that's where we come to the end of this uh, presentation. I feel like I've sped through it. Hopefully it wasn't too fast. Um, does anybody have any questions, any comments, anything you want to ask? Is that a no? Alan? Yes, yeah. I 
Um, and I don't know that this is the right forum for this, but um, you're talking about branches and regions, etc. We're part of a pilot scheme at the moment, yeah. and it doesn't fit. Um, has that been considered? And I'm not asking you to give an answer now. Um, and I know Murray's going to contact you. Yeah. So, so it is in consideration. It is being considered because yes, it sits in a different way. In terms of the National Life Saving Championships, though, uh, we will keep the structure. I know you're part of a group, but we still need to keep the structure for the moment just to keep it fair. Um, so there would be uh, for the National Life Saving Championships, um, the, the Scottish region and the North East. However, there's no reason why regions can't um, come together to run a common competition. So, for example, the, the West, it's, yeah, the Western and the South are talking about running a combined competition. So each region maintains their competition places, but it takes place at one venue. And actually, that means we can help hopefully reduce the costs. We can also pull together our, our, re our resources as volunteers and try and spread the load a little bit about all the, the competition organisation and running of it, hopefully have more volunteers available to, to take part um, in, in helping us out. Uh, uh, well, as you know, we've suggested that for up here as well, but it's really on a wider process that if you're looking at, at big reviews at the moment, which is great, um, can can I just say, can you bear pilot mind, pilot groups in mind while you do it? Uh, and, and those will be part of it because potentially our structure of our society may be changing in that way. Pilots there to, to trial this thing, to trial it out. Um, that's got to be part of any future. And I don't really want to go through a review and then to have to change it all once we come up with it. So it will definitely be part of, of what we do. Thank you. We'll probably send you lots of, of comments as, as we come across issues. Yeah. No, that's that's the that's the best thing to do because then we can feed that in and and test whatever ideas we're coming up with and um, and see. Okay, does it work in this way? Mm, maybe it doesn't. Maybe we need to revise what our plan is. So no, please do whatever comments. Please please send them in. Okay. Um, Alan, you have got some questions coming up, but you probably can't see them, so you might want to take That's the screen right. down. Oh. So, yeah. Uh, okay, let me... Um, Karen, let me... Karen's got a question. Oh, um, yeah. And Verity. And Verity, yeah. Right, sorry. Let me stop presenting, and then I can maybe see everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All of you were in a tiny little box at the bottom of the screen, and uh, I couldn't see anything. So, sorry. I don't know whose hand went up first, so... Um, Karen, you're the first person I can see, so uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, I, just a comment, please, on your slides. Um, I'm based in the Republic of Ireland, so when you mentioned the regional heats, you just mentioned UK, it didn't include Ireland in that. Um, because we will be running our own regionals, you know, with a hope of getting to nationals. Um, and then also, no, no, that, wasn't, that wasn't intended to say there wasn't anything happening in Ireland. Uh, that <laughs> very much, I expect Ireland to be running a competition, uh, <laughs> yeah. regional heat, having been yeah. that referee at myself before. So, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then also, just to, just for your own interest, like we, the, um, our own club, are planning, which is Poseidon Life Saving Club, are planning to host our own um, open water competition around September time we were just discussing it last night we've done it for the last couple of years we've actually revamped the um, Mountbatten competition so just you know that's that's something else that I don't know you know whether many open water as in sea competitions go ahead in the UK I don't know uh -huh. looks like John uh, are you still muted John Is it there? No, yeah. that's me. That's yeah, yeah. Amy. John. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I've got brilliant, brilliant. No, Southeast Region, yes, we have annually for decades held an open water one in the in the seas. We have had it in inland waters in the past in the 70s. 
but um, the last couple of years we haven't because of COVID. Yeah. We'll look at hopefully this year. I do have a regional meeting coming up in June, um, and hopefully um, make a range for uh, July August time. Hmm. Brilliant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you want, if you if the competition you want to open out with Tol Karen as a club, we're, we're more than happy to to host the information online and and spread that through the website and through the different club newsletters and those sort of things, make people aware of it. If, if yeah, that's just, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, just the our, details Alan, of the competitions. Because yeah, Alan, uh, and kept on, Alan and I kept on saying we would take the our licensing club over to Ireland at some point. <laughs> We've actually got some really nice members at the moment, so that was the kind of thing we'd be looking for if we went over. So uh, that'd be good. Okay. I'm very I'd like pleased. to ask one more thing just out of interest. The World Championships, is that only open to teams or is it open to individuals? You tend to enter as part of a team, but I can't, okay. I can't, you tend to enter as part of a team. However, for clubs this year, that, that's been cancelled, the club element. So it's open to masters and national teams um, this year. Hopefully, with in two years time it'll all go back to normal again um but it's just with with covid and the developing situation they've had to cancel the the club element of it just to manage number um so let, yeah yeah hopefully i think it's australia in two years time so um yeah it's where sorry australia oh right okay <laughs> on the gold coast wow thank you so, uh, Verity, I think your hand was the next one that went up. Let me just take it down so I don't leave a legacy hand. <laughs> um, yeah, so first of all, just apologies for signing on late because my, my um, thing had gone into spam. <laughs> I couldn't find it, which is why I wasn't there right from the beginning. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, oh, I'm a bit of I'm myself. Um, so basically, I'm quite a new instructor. Um, um, I've just done a really fairly recent done my years and then did the survive and save um, when we did the courses um, that have been running um, recently over the last few months. Um, and I really want to try and start introducing sport into the club and getting the kids so what we've done we've sort of revamped our our program for the rookies so that we're doing a couple of weeks of rookies and then i've put i've added in the um the rookie um um the add-on the tag the tag on this sport so i can start trying to introduce it but i guess where i'm struggling is so at the minute as a, as a new instructor um, I, all I'm doing at the minute is I'm going off, off what's on the resources at the minute and sort of reading that and looking at, OK, this is what the, this is what we say we have to teach and this is how we're teaching it. I, and from that, you know, looking at actually looking at, you know, preparing the kids for sport, preparing them for competition. I'm as a as a, somebody who wants to try and introduce it into club. I'm quite lost at the minute of where to find that information. So what what are the races what what does that incorporate what what do we need to be aiming for do we how do we actually enter that and i think that's the bit that i'm i'm really struggling with so i guess it's um what i'm asking is is there a i mean i know you've mentioned some of the websites and things but is there a you know a link that sort of helps out or i know you were talking about the coaching um side of it or how do we access that to know that we're teaching the right the right things <laughs> essentially I, I would say certainly at the moment the, the website contains the rules for the different championships as well as uh information about if you go into the it sounds like how old are the kids are they rookie did you say so we've we've our club will we've basically got eight to 16 17 year olds so we do okay. survive the save as well um so we do do we're trying to introduce more of the support into into the survive and save as well and our other coach is is more um experienced in this but we've never taken the the kids or prepared them or got them to the point where they're competition ready or anything like that so it's just that i guess it's how do we do that <laughs> and okay so so the the website also has some some different like rookie events or ideas for it because rookie competitions tend to be more varied 
And so it really is depending if you're going for, like, say, the lead, the competition that's going to happen in Leeds, they have their own set of events. If you went to another competition, it might be slightly different. But they tend to produce a, a, a brief set of rules of what to do. Okay. Certainly for the National Life Saving Championships and Speeds, there are videos of the events that yeah. you can see online. You just need to compare those with the rules because some of the videos haven't kept up to date with rule changes. Okay. Uh, it's always worth just just checking. So I, I did the go on this year and looked at the speeds and went on YouTube and and, and watched some of them. So yeah. um... so no, that that's that will be the latest. That will be the latest of what you can see. Um, but at the moment, the the um, the, the coaching award isn't available yet. It's still yeah. under development. So that that's still a number of months away. Um, a lot of it we're doing um sort of people that are close by we can put you in touch maybe with a club um we we had a club that turned up at um leeds last year that were had traveled for about an hour and a half to come and see what life-saving sports all about and we yeah. set those up with them with a the local club and actually they fostered a good little relationship between them of sharing information instructors have gone both ways to a see how life-saving sports coach but also go over and do some coaching and support those instructors so at the moment it's very much supporting each other okay. uh, in that respect um and that can also be done online i suppose we can we can talk through mm -hmm. things but it's easier when it's in person um and with everything opening up a little bit more it's it's easy to do so yeah um, fairly close to retford so i know okay I course at Retford so um Pete did I'd say I could go up and, and watch so, <laughs> and have a look he's always at, at Retford he they've got a very active club very yeah. sporty. they seem to do something sporty every couple of weeks from what I see on Facebook of all the pictures and stuff but I mean so we can make an introduction if you need to or um that's probably going to be the quickest way to see what what goes on because the this is part of developing those resources and and making it easier for people to introduce and then when it comes to the competitions that like the championships, uh, what we can do is we started trying to offer out sort of help sessions because we found actually if it's the first time you're ever entering speeds, it's quite daunting. You've got to go to one bit to do the payment. You've got to go to another bit to enter your team in a particular way in the entry system, input the data and so on. Mm -hmm. So we've actually started putting trying to put together um, like webinars or, or sessions just to take people through it and show this is what you need to do this is how you go about doing it and we yeah. guide we're guiding people through step by step at the moment um so as i say don't don't feel that there isn't any help we, we can certainly provide some help okay so basically it's just go onto the websites have a have a look at it um and then see if i can um because i did my um, my course up in Retford with Pete, so I, I've got his email, so I can I can get back in contact with him um, and then take it from there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and if you've got questions, then then email Teresa at the competitions one, and we can pass it okay. on to the right person, or phone you up, or or get in touch in in some way and and help offer. There's well, I've got I've got a cupboard behind me that's got lots of different bits over the years. People have put DVDs together, people have put instructions on how to build obstacles. To swim under there's there's loads of different bits i've got that probably need to try and put online somewhere um yeah. that, that can help well, our first of... challenge was to get some new bungs for the uh, tango mess <laughs> so oh, right, yeah. <laughs> but I've, I've met that challenge i've done that like so. dust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was like i've labeled every single one <laughs> they've been counted in and pounded out <laughs> yeah. um but yeah no that's um that's helpful thank you no no problem Liz, your hands up. Yeah, my question was um, sort of like what carries on really from Verity, and that is what can we do to get new clubs actually participating in a life saving competition? And at the other end, how can we support, um, you know, sort of like developing athletes, you know, when they haven't got the opportunity to do things through the club? You know, back in the um, old days, you know, John and I used to, um, you know, do some coaching. Um, for a South Development Squad and that was really good for me because I learned about you know how to do competition life saving from a you know from a real expert um, and um, you know we've lost all of that now and you know, it's quite noticeable at the speed championships that the limited number of clubs that take part in, in that event so you know that those are my sort of like areas of concern or you know wish support for and what and that's where 
some of the reviews are trying to understand what the barriers are to entry and what we can do to break those barriers down to make it more accessible. And I think the focus needs to be a lot more on the club environment. I think we often look for something to be organised centrally, which always isn't available. We need people, I think, to feel confident um, that they can organise something. So by developing some of these resources and trying to hold little workshops and put people in touch with each other, I'm hoping we can organically at a low level try to build that. With, with respect to developing it in the future, I think that's where some of the longer term actions there of trying to get more people involved. So we're pairing people up to come and officiate, to come and organise competitions with the coaching awards, very much that would be then supported by actual coaching. You'll have coaches with the experience of the John Stainers and and those, hopefully, Jack Gary Lee and people like that that have all that experience and come and coach alongside them and get get some help, get some tips um, and learn learn from them as well as supported by the, by the coaching award. So, so the idea behind a lot of these things is to not just run um, a workshop and go, here we go, you've done a workshop shop you've got a tick in the box off you go is to then run a follow-up event so we're looking at doing an officiating course hopefully with the lead up to our national competitions so we're supporting that okay come and learn about officiating and then actually day put it in practice start having a go start learning from those really experienced officials that we have around poolside um and that's that's the sort of structure methodology that Trying to trying to. Achieve, I think I, I know there's been a lot of um, you know debate about survival save awards and sport within them, um, but you know the thing is there that we were just getting to the stage as well with survival and save awards where you know people began to accept there were sport awards. I know there's a lot of people not doing them, but now we're moving them from the the main pathway of life saving. I mean I'm not sure exactly what survive and save will be in the future either, but you know again we're removing them from the the from the norm you know from the normal life saving award structure so we need to find out once they aren't once there are new awards and once there is a new pathway we need to find a way of making sure that people are aware of it because it's going to be easy even easier for those people who don't really want to do competition life saving who are our life saving instructors to dip out of it yeah yeah no no that's a valid concern and that's that's something we'll have to to look to address nothing I, I don't think i can give you an answer here and now because no. i don't know if I, I don't just, know what the rewards are going to look like either. And if I could just come back to Liz with saying, actually, how do we encourage, you know, new clubs to actually be involved in sport? I absolutely agree. It's about having that support and, and being or having that budget to show how to actually do it. Because I, speaking to some other clubs who were also on the course, you know, I said, do you do sport? And they just went... No, you know, it's it's very much, a, I don't know quite what it is and I don't know quite how to do it and I don't know what to do and I don't want to teach the kids anything wrong. No, and, yeah. and, and therefore it's actually easier not to do it. But actually for the kids it's great because it, it, it changes yeah. it for them. But there's also people who don't want to teach it, you know, so there are people actually. in the past. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I mean, you, know, you know, I know people who've competed in yeah. a life-saving club who then don't promote competition sport yeah. yeah so i mean i wouldn't know about that so no you know, i know it's it's just saying, I mean, bit, you know there's a person yeah. in somerset you know like vernon you know he just won't do competition sport really in the life saving club yeah. and uh, so the kids just lose out but that you know we're removing the you know at the moment we've got sport in the norm in you know, it's seen as part of the award structure and uh, as soon as we remove it from the from the award structure there's a danger again of losing the or any kudos you've given it over the last few years? Alan, I think it's great what you're saying about teaming up coaches to, to drive forward sport. And I'm going to throw the spanner in the works and say, when you're setting this up, can you think creatively and outside the box? Uh, I'm thinking, I'm, and you know I always hark on about Scotland, but thinking about the geography of Scotland, uh, if I look at the Virgining Club's in Aberdeen, they can't be paired up with somebody locally because there is nobody locally to do it. So I'm, again, I'm not asking for an answer, but I think we need to think more creatively than work with your local, you know, the nearest local club who can who can support you. I, 
I, I understand that because we have people not just in Scotland, but yeah, across I, Ireland, I, across the UK, across it, Wales, they're all quite spread out. Um, and I, I think uh, I think we're at the point at the moment where we, we have to consider where we actually are um, as an organisation, mm -hmm. what we can actually achieve and why we may start off small and hopefully we can expand. Um, we part of the, the run in the coaching events is to have a bigger event, but in different areas. So around the country, hopefully that could then spur on the development of more localised competitions. Um, I, I completely get that. Point. And it starts to evolve from that. Um, what I was more thinking of was that's ideal and, and two steps down the line. When we're at step one, is it possible to to team up coaches and do it via Teams, do it via Zoom or anything else? And I, But I think that needs to go right in at the, the, the ground levels so that everybody has the same opportunity. And I picked Scotland as an example, but I could have picked Ireland or anywhere else. It's great where there are clubs in close proximity together, where the physical going between clubs is great. But there's many areas where that's not possible. And I think at this point, we need to be a little bit creative to make sure they're not left behind. I'm, I'm purposely not saying too much about what's going on because there's a lot of work going on in the background. So I'll take the comment on board. Um, and that, that's fantastic. That's already partly incorporated in what, what we intend to do. But that's absolutely fantastic. And that's all I wanted you to say to me. Yeah. I, I I don't I can't share everything because clearly things are changing and and, um, and 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 developing in different ways. So I don't want to profess something and then find it's all completely changed. So I just find well, that if, taken you on board. if you don't say something now, I would hate it to be thought about in a year's time. I'd rather it was thought about now. Yeah, no problem. John, I think you've had your hand up for a little bit. <laughs> You're still muted, though. OK, now? Yeah, can hear you. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I've had my hand up for a while. It's a question really for Verity. Um, I've been Sussex um, decades, and um, rookie competitions I've held since rookie started. Uh, Verity, if I can help you to let me have your email address. I could send you some samples of, of programs I've had which have the brief rules in it. Yeah, that would yeah, be that speaking, What I've done with their youngsters, we, we've always started in the water from either end. They haven't dived in because very often there's, there's shallow water anyway, one end. Um, but they've all been events of four person relays. Very often have a team of up to six so they can swap around a bit mixed teams, males and females, um, and in a uh, couple age groups. So um, shall I give you my email address over the line now? Yeah, that'd be marvellous. So either way. John, <laughs> can I just say, it, it's just probably, it in the this has been recorded. Yeah. yeah. Probably just just giving out to everybody. So it's probably yeah, better yeah. when we come off the recording. OK, yeah. OK, just that's fine. Hang on, on at the end when it's recording stopped, yeah? Yeah. yeah. OK. Otherwise, you'll get lots of emails. Or, or, yeah. or just, just text me your phone number or something. Thank you. OK, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Brilliant. That's, that's great. Good. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions or comments or ideas that people have had while we've been talking? As, just as from, from my side, as a club side, um, I, it, it, it's my view that that the competition structure can start at both ends, and we can we, we need to start at the well, my end of it is starting at the bottom at clubs, and it's getting. I don't, I've, I've mentioned this to you, Alan. If if I can, within say a county or a couple of counties, get get three clubs who put their hand up and say, well, actually, we quite fancy doing the, the competition. You know, you have a structure for a year, a year's competition there. You know, each club will have one once every three months. Well, if you've got a, you've got a competition for a year um, and it's it's assisting them in, to, in developing those in putting those in place in realizing that actually a lot of the people out or people out who are involved in clubs are more than capable 
of running these things. Um, and and I, I mean, I've got experience in other sports in this. And, you know, one, the one I always say is judo. Um, and in judo, I had coaches, oh, we can't run that. You need, you need referees. Well, hang on a second. You tell me you're a coach and you don't, you can't <laughs> referee. Oh, well, yeah, no, no, you don't. You just, so it's put in place. And I think, and the other thing that you get around that is that it, it's great training timekeepers. It's great training team managers, but if there's nothing to timekeep and nothing to manage, then it, it seems a bit of a pointless exercise. So people maybe don't do it. So you, you then increase your numbers of people doing these jobs. So it's that starting point, getting a club to put their hand up and say, actually, We'd like to give this a go. And if you, as I say, in an area you can get three. And I've not worked for British Judo for three years now. And I'm still seeing clubs that I started off competitions with. They're still running them. They're still running them in Suffolk and in Norfolk. They have, each of those have four clubs running a little competition. I say little, they're big now. Um, big competitions for beginners, for people at the lower end things and it, it works well it, it enables it enables things to grow the area competitions all got bigger and some of those players end up in national competitions it, it's it's a it's a great thing to be able to get involved yeah I, that's what we need we need some as i said we need some grassroots activity so that we can then find our elite athletes but we also need to then support our elite our elite athlete, athletes at the other end of it so it's it's having a, a pathway and competitors as well yeah I, I definitely agree with with all of those points, and I, I just I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver, which I, I think is very easy to do. There's, this is a start of a, a long journey that will take time, and and actually it needs all of you to to come and help us, or or encourage other people to come and help and and to get involved, because as it says, it just needs a few people to start doing things, and and as Lawrence has shown, you can it can just continue to grow, and grow and grow. So one with Verity, which which club are you at? I should know. Sorry, just trying to unmute myself. Um, Carlton. Oh, Carlton. Carlton oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I will, yeah. I'll be in touch. That'd be great. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, the only other slide I had was to ask questions about what your thoughts were about the future of life saving and life saving sport in the UK and Ireland and what support you might want and those sort of things. But I'm, I'm not going to flash it up because we've, we've sort of been having that conversation. Um, I'm just conscious that I think we said this was going to end at half past seven. So we've, we've got two minutes left. So there's time for a quick question. If not, or if you don't want to share in this forum, then feel free to get in touch at, at with competitions at rlss.org.uk or get in touch with me directly via Facebook uh, or or email or get in touch with Lawrence. You, they can all get in touch with me. Um, my society email is Alan Sutherland at rlss.org.uk. So please get in touch wherever your thoughts are or just if you want to arrange a phone call, I can phone you back. We can have a, a conversation one evening. Um, but I'm willing to hear all ideas. We've got a plan for the rest of this year going into the start of next year, but certainly later this year we'll be looking at, OK, what, how are we going to take the next stage into 2023? And we'll keep growing. The idea is to keep growing this year on year uh, and, and try and develop things. Um, so with COVID restrictions changing, actually it's opening up more doors and opportunities for us to get back together again and, and do those things. So. Okay, thanks very much, Alan. Um, I will stop recording now. If uh, if people want to uh, remain for a chat, happy to. But 